Good evening and welcome to our Monday Thursday service at Plymouth United Church of Christ and our online worship. No matter who you are or where you are on life's journey, you are welcome here to discover meaning in life, to grow in relationship with God, and to serve neighbors near and far. Please join Pastor Teresa in our responsive call to worship. Jesus spent his life teaching us the meaning of love. Through word and deed, Jesus showed us how to love God and to love one another. He fed the hungry, he healed the sick, he invited the women and children and tax collectors and the sinners to come to his table. He broke bread with the least, the lost, and shared the cup of redemption with them all. He crossed boundaries of race, nationality, ethnicity, gender, and class. He challenged religious authority, and he scoffed at pomposity and self-absorbed grandeur. He called out the hypocrites. He admonished the scribes and the Pharisees for their hardened hearts. He brought a simple message, love God, love yourself, and love one another. We gather in the name of Jesus and remember the way that he showed us. We gather to remember not just his death, but his life. Please join our chancel choir and cantor Charlie Marsh in singing Ubi Caritas, where charity and love prevail. Please join in our unison prayer confession. God's love for the world has been revealed in Jesus Christ, who certainly loved us to the uttermost. Jesus, Savior and Lord, who at his last meal with his disciples gave them and us that new commandment, love one another just as I have loved you. 
you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. Merciful God, we confess that so often our discipleship has been weak. We have failed to serve as Jesus served. Forgive us. When we have failed to love one another as Jesus loves us, forgive us. When we have been happy to proclaim our devotion to Jesus with our lips and then denied him by our actions, forgive us. Merciful God, empower us by your spirit to be steady and true to you in every time of trial. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please join in singing Kyrie eleison. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, I came not to judge the world, but to save the world. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The good news, therefore, is this. In Jesus Christ, we are loved and we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Please join in our responsive reading of Psalm 116. What shall I return to God for all God's bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of God. I will pay my vows to God. I will pay them in the presence of all God's people. Precious in the sight of God is the death of God's faithful ones. O oh God, I am your servant and the child of your servant. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice. I will call on the name of God. I will pay my vows to God in the presence of all God's people. In the courts of the house of God, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise be to God. The way of Jesus goes through the cross, but we are not there yet. It is close. We can see its shadow. We can feel the cold, dark night. We know that the enemies of God are conspiring. They've had enough of him. He threatens their comfort. He threatens their way of life. He threatens their power. They will come for him. First through, first though we will gather. We gather with Jesus and his closest friends. We gather with those that called him teacher, rabbi, friends. We gather for the Passover meal to remember that God saved the people from slavery. God saved once. God saves forevermore. God saved the Israelites at Passover and revealed that it is God who reigns, not the Pharaoh. Our God saved once. God saves forevermore. It was a different kind of Passover, to say the least. I remember right when we sat down, Philip leaned over to me and he whispers, Hey, Thomas, I feel like something special is going to happen tonight. <laughs> I looked at him. I said, I doubt it. I was wrong. <laughs> Jesus got up from the table. He, he walked over and grabbed a basin of water and a towel. And I remember at the time thinking to myself, what's Jesus doing with the foot water? You know, I doubt he's going to wash somebody's feet. <laughs> I was wrong. He knelt down and began to wash Bartholomew's feet. Bart just sat there. He, uh, he didn't say anything. He didn't move. None of us did. Jesus finished and went on to James and Andrew and the rest of us. I remember at the time thinking, this is so strange yet wonderful. And then I thought, 
I doubt anybody's gonna say anything right now. I was wrong. You know who broke the silence. Peter. No way you're gonna wash our feet. I mean, that's what I told him. He could wash other people's feet, but he wasn't gonna wash mine. I looked at him and I said, Jesus, you're not gonna wash our feet. I mean, you're the king. And he looked at me and he said, well, then you can have nothing to do with me. And I'm like, ouch, okay, wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my whole body if you have to. He looked at me and said, no, your feet will be fine, Peter. In the midst of him washing our feet, he teaches us servanthood. Then Jesus took some bread and some wine, he blessed it and he served it to us. He said it was uh, a new covenant with his blood. And he said, um, tonight, all of you will lose faith in me. I remember thinking right then, lose faith in you? Never. But I didn't say anything. I just sat there. I couldn't just sit there, I had to say something. So I looked at him and I said, Jesus, I love you. You can count on me. Everybody else may fall away, but I will not. You can count on me. He looked at me and he smiled. He said, Peter, you'll deny me three times for tomorrow morning. Ouch. The next thing I knew, we were wrapping things up and we were headed to the garden to pray. Even as they were sharing the sacred meal together, the disciples were not of one heart. Jesus knew that he was asking much from these men and he knew that they would fail him. Judas had already agreed to betray Jesus to the religious authorities. Was he angry at some slight? Was he disappointed that Jesus would not raise an army against the Romans? Was he upset with the value of the oil that the woman wasted when she anointed Jesus? We will never know Judas' heart, but Jesus, Jesus knew that he would be betrayed. And did Jesus do with the man that would betray him? He broke bread with him. All of the disciples were deeply saddened and they asked, I would never betray you, Lord. It's not me, is it? On the night in which Jesus was betrayed by his friend, he took the bread and he gave thanks to it and broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said that this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to God, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of our faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and the cup. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by Christ's blood. By your Holy Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. And we feast at this heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for calling forth creation out of nothing, raising us from dust by the breath of your love, we praise you for your faithfulness and compassion toward us. In every generation, you call a people to yourself, promise them your favor, deliver them from bondage, and desire to make of them one united family. We are that family, Lord. You set before us the ways of life and death, blessings and curse, and invite us to follow your way. Yet even when our eyes are dazzled by pride and selfishness or blinded by sin and fear, you do not abandon us to the power of death. To every generation, you send prophets and martyrs and peacemakers to call us back to you. In this season of repentance and conversion, 
When we turn from our sin and towards your mercy, we are reminded that you know us better than we know ourselves and love us more truly than we love ourselves or one another. Therefore, we rejoice with the whole host of believers of every generation as we proclaim. Merciful God, as sisters and brothers in faith, we recall anew these words and acts of Jesus Christ. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed and broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Jesus took a cup and after giving thanks, gave it to the disciples and said, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread and bless the fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be open and we may recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other and in all of whom Christ died. Please join together in our Lord's Prayer as we bless together both our mother and our father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And so we take this bread, um, and the, reminding ourselves that we are the body of Christ. No matter where we find ourselves, and maybe we find ourselves just depressed this day or disappointed, discouraged, or away from family and friends, we are still connected to the body. We are the body of Christ. We take this cup reminding ourselves that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God and so that we're called at this time of Easter renewal of our spirits to remind ourselves of our individual gifts to let our light shine before men and women that we might glorify our God which is in heaven the body of Christ please eat in the cup of salvation In our prayer of thanksgiving, we pray together, nourished, nourished by, by the living bread and sustained by the cup of salvation, let our repentant lives become our offering of thankful service. You alone, O God, can keep us from falling and bring us into the presence of your glory. To you, our Savior, through Jesus Christ, be glory and majesty and dominion and authority before all time now and forevermore. Amen. He was despised and rejected by others, a man of suffering and acquainted with infirmity. And as one from whom others hide their faces, he was despised, and we held him of no account. Surely he has borne our infirmities and carried our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, 
struck down by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our iniquities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth, like a lamb that is led to the slaughter, and like a sheep that before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living, stricken for the transgression of my people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich, although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth. Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore I will allot to him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors. Yet he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Once we got to the garden, um, it's just got crazy. Um, Jesus asked Peter, James, and myself to go further in the garden with him and pray, and we did. We tried. We kept falling asleep. Um, Jesus kept waking us up. I remember one time he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's true. It's all a blur. Uh, <laughs> And I think this whole mess got started because of Judas. Did he really think what he was doing was right? There. There he is. He's the one you want. The one praying by himself. Now the others, they will come up and try to create some scene. But the one that I kiss on the cheek, that's the one you want. Now 30 pieces of silver, right? That's what we agreed upon? 30 pieces. Forget about the rest. The one that I kiss on the cheek, that's the one you want. A kiss? Judas betrays Jesus with the kiss of a friend? Uh, and then it, it got crazy. Uh, Peter, <laughs> Peter grabs a sword and he, he cuts off this guy's ear. And Jesus, Jesus reached down and picked it up and put it right back on the guy's head as if nothing had happened. And then, um, and then they took him. I'd love to tell you that we fought for him, but we didn't. Everyone ran. I ran. I'm so ashamed. What have I done? What have I done? Was I so stupid to think that... I've killed him. I've killed him. I've crucified Jesus. Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. But Peter was following at a distance. When they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat among them. 
Then a servant girl, seeing him in the firelight, stared at him and said, This man also was with him. But he denied it, saying, Woman, I do not know him. A little later, someone else on seeing him said, You also are one of them. But Peter said, Man, I am not. Then, about an hour later, yet another kept insisting, Surely this man also was with him, for he is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know who are you talking about. At that moment, while he was still speaking, the cock crowed. The Lord turned and looked at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord, how he had said to him, Before the cock crows today, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. I crucified Jesus. It's what the crowd wanted and that's what they got. And personally, I don't feel like that man did anything to deserve that, but I was just a soldier doing my job. When the governor gave his sentence, that's when I would go to work. I loved that job. I felt like I was administering justice every time I nailed someone to a tree. But that man, that man didn't deserve that. It makes sense to me. It makes no sense. There I was, rotten in a jail cell, for stealing, murdering. You name it, I've done it. And I knew the next time I stepped foot outside that jail cell, well, I mean, that was it. So the guards, they came and got me, and they put me beside this guy that was beaten to a pulp. Then Governor Pilate started asking the crowd, which one of these men do you want me to set free? I mean, it was obvious. I mean, the crowd, they're gonna say, let Jesus go. And then I was gonna tell them where they could go. And then the crowd, they started chanting Barabbas. I mean, I mean they were saying my name. They were saying my name over and over and over again. The guards, they threw me to the crowd, and they, and they, and they took Jesus to Golgotha. I mean, I mean one minute, I, I am a man marked for death, and then the next, I'm, I'm free. It made no sense. So I followed him all the way to Golgotha. I was stationed at Golgotha that day. We just raised the second criminal when they brought him to me. I'll never forget the way he looked. He'd been beaten, spit on, whipped. He was unrecognizable as a man, hideous. What was left of his clothes were stripped off of him and he was thrown down on the cross. That's when I went to work. Generally, when you crucify a man, the first hand is the most difficult. The criminal wants to get away, he fights you. So I would have two soldiers hold him down, but this guy, he didn't put up a fight. I just thought he was exhausted. As an executioner, I've been called every name in the book. I've had men yell at me, plead with me. But I wasn't prepared for that. He looked at us. He looked at me. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He forgave me. Forgive them. He said, forgive them. Who is he? Forgive. It should have been me up there. I was the one that was supposed to be hanging on that cross. He took my place. Then I looked up, and I remember he took a uh, deep, agonizing 
breath and he said, it is finished. And then he died. Surely this man was the son of God. Two others also who were criminals were led away to be put to death with him. When they came to the place that is called the skull, they crucified Jesus there with the criminals, one on his right and one on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And they cast lots to divide his clothing. And the people stood by watching. But the leader scoffed at him, saying, He saved others. Let him save himself if he is the Messiah of God, his chosen one. The soldiers also mocked him, coming up and offering him sour wine and saying, If you are the king of the Jews, save yourself. There was also an inscription over him. It read, this is the king of the Jews. One of the criminals who were hanged there kept deriding him and saying, are you not the Messiah? Save yourself and us. But the other rebuked him saying, do you not fear God since you are under the same sentence of condemnation? And we indeed have been condemned justly for we are getting what we deserve for our deeds, but this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said, Jesus, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus replied, truly I tell you, today you will be with me in paradise. Meanwhile, standing near the cross of Jesus were his mother and his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing beside her, he said to his mother, Woman, here is your son. And then to the disciple, Here is your mother. And from that hour, the disciple took her into his own home. The candle is lit, the lights are dimmed, the service has begun. As the melting marks our progress, we do as we are told. Among the reading and the response, watching narrative unfold, we see him set his face like flint toward a bitter destination. We hear his silence fill the court absorbing, biting accusation. The void his words have left, filled now with darker sound, the hint of kiss, the curse of foe, the pound of fist, the rooster crow. I eat the bread and drink the cup, bearing stains I can't deny. Think of bloody sweat and bled, Hear my heart shout, crucify. The old, old story, strange and new, the weight of murdered son. His dying breath is on his lips. The closing song is almost done. There, now, it is finished. The room is darker now. The smell of the snuffed out candle creeps toward the worshipers and hope must wait for another day. <laughs> 